Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good to see you. Amen. I said, It's good to see you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Many people sometimes, you know, they come up and they say, Well, I've got this issue and I've got this problem. And if you start to look at the attendance record in church, it's not a good record. So they decide to come to church when they feel like it. That's not how you should come to church. Coming to church because you feel like it? No. You commit yourself to something. Do you understand that? When you commit yourself to something, you start to do it. For, for example, you know, um, turn to uh, Matthew chapter 6. Hallelujah. See, the Bible says in verse 31, it says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? It says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. It says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. Now that is the word of God written to you. Have you taken a hold of that scripture and said to yourself from today, I refuse to be anxious. I refuse to be worried. I refuse to take thought of the morrow because I know God is with me. See, that is a practical application of the word of God. Say amen. amen. Now, verse 33 says, But seek ye first, the kingdom of God and what? Is righteousness. So that means your job is to what? Seek first the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not a place. Seek ye first the kingdom of God means God's way of doing things. The rule of God. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things. Then it says, and his righteousness. And then would you finish the scripture with me? So how would you want all things to be added unto you? Or how can you get all things that you want a life to be added to you. Simple. God gives you the answer in His Word. He says what? He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So I said the kingdom of God is not a place. It is God's rule in your life. It is God's governing authority. God's lordship in your life. If you would do that, if you would seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, his righteousness does not mean just being good. His righteousness means His nature that has been imparted to your spirit, your human spirit. If you can meditate on that, if you can uh, uh, have that consciousness inside of you that you are the righteousness of God and that you function from that level, it means you will rule and reign in life and all things that you ever desire shall follow after you. Amen. Shall run after you. But you see the mistake many of God's children are making is they want all of those things to follow them. But they do not want to do it by the rule of God. Amen. Do you see that? You understand that? Uh, I'm not preaching along these lines, but I just wanted to share with you. Look. God's word says this. It says, it says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. Malachi, right? Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. Amen. You remember that? Amen. Then what does God's word say? Turn, turn there quickly. Malachi chapter 3. It says, 
I, I want to, I'm, I'm going somewhere, but I'm just setting that as a platform, right? It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, they, they may be meat in mine house, and prove me now here what saith the Lord of hosts. What did he say? He says, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now my subject matter is not tithes. I think we dealt with a little bit that or that on Sunday. My subject matter is the rule of God. The kingdom of God. What? Now, you've read that word. I've shared that word with you. What will you do with that word? See, the Bible tells us in John, Jesus is the word. If you would read John, the first chapter, Jesus Christ was the word of God made flesh. Then the Bible says that he came and dwelt amongst us. But it also says that he came unto his own and they received him not. Prior to Jesus' coming, God sent the prophets. The prophets came. God sent them, raised them up. And you can read the Old Testament. Every prophet came and every prophet had a message from God. And some of them did not receive the message of the prophets. So in rejecting the prophet of God, they rejected Jesus. They rejected the word. It was the word that they rejected. Because these prophets who were men, they spoke under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It meant that they had a message from God. It was a message of life. It was to the nations of Israel, the Jews. He was telling them something. They refused to listen. And in them not listening, they had calamity upon calamity upon calamity. Why? God spoke. They did not want to listen. They refused to listen. Now, here we are seated tonight. God is speaking to us. How is God speaking? It's not man speaking. If a man is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, it is God speaking. Amen. The words are anointed. Everything that he's speaking to you, you've got to have an open spirit to receive the word of God. As you would receive it, as you will believe it. And then it does not stop with believing. It, was, it, it means that after you believe, you will act on that word. Now, simple illustration. It means now God's word in Malachi 3 says, bring in the tithes into the storehouse. Now, it is not for you to reflect on the matter and contemplate. It is for you to believe and act. Amen. That's where many of God's people have a problem. I'm using that just as an illustration to illustrate where I'm going to tonight. I'm not using that as a subject matter. My subject matter is not tithes and offerings. I'm just using that. I could use healing as an example, but I've chosen to use that about tithes. God says, bring the tenth part of all of your income and increase to the house of the Lord. He says, so that I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And then he says, I'll bless you. See that? He says, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. That means nothing can touch you. Hallelujah. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time and the field, saith the Lord of hosts. That means nothing you would touch would turn to dust. Nothing you would touch would um, come to nothing. It means that if you would do that, God being with you, as you are functioning in the kingdom of God, as you are operating the word within the kingdom of God, things will start to work for you. Do, do you understand it's not for you to say, well, you know, I wonder if that is true. God's word says it. Amen. Now, you know, one man came to me uh, some time back. He said, he said I, I, I don't believe in tithing. 
He's a businessman. He says, I don't believe in tithing. I says, why? He says, that is your interpretation. He says, that's not my interpretation. I said, what do you mean interpretation? It's not an interpretation. It's a word of God. Amen. The question is, how far are you willing to obey you? See, it comes again to the um, issue of obedience. Now, there are certain things in your Christian life that you just have to deal with. For example, tithing is an issue that a Christian shouldn't be grappling with. God's yeah. word says it. You believe it, you do it. Hawking and forgiveness is another issue. The Lord does not say in His Word, you know, and there are several scriptures to back what I'm saying. He does not say in His Word, He says, well, you know, you can decide whether you need to forgive or you can, you can, you, can, you know, have a, have a family discussion whether you need to forgive. Um, he does not say that uh, you may decide whether you want to walk in love or don't want to walk in love. No, he does not say that. The Bible explicitly instructs us to walk in love. Amen. That means whether you agree with the other person or don't agree, you've got to walk in love. It's not an issue that is debatable. It's something that you need to do. Say do. do. So, tithing, you ought to do. Walking in love, you ought to do. Walking in forgiveness, you ought to do. Coming to the house of the Lord. The Bible says, neglect not the gathering together of saints. That means whenever there's church meetings, you ought to be, you find yourself in the presence of God. Why? The Bible says, Jesus said, you are made clean by the words that I have spoken to you. That means the word of God preached out to you cleans you. The washing of the water by the word of God. That means you cannot neglect not coming to church. Why? Because when the preacher is preaching the word of God, it washes you. It cleanses your mind. All the filthy thoughts you think. All of those nonsensical things that come to your mind. In the presence of the Lord, under the anointing of the Lord, the Word of God washes your mind. You can wash your body with soap and water, but you can't wash your mind and your heart with water. No. It has, you, you, your spirit man, your soul man, has to get the Word of God to come inside and wash you. So you can start thinking holy again. You can start thinking right thoughts again. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. So what is pastor saying tonight? I'm saying in your, it's your foundation. It's one of the foundation in your Christian life to be a doer of God's word. Amen. You've got to decide that for yourself. Pastor cannot decide it for you. I've got to decide it for myself. But we can teach you the Word of God. But the onus and the responsibility after I teach you the Word of God is for you to go and do it. Amen. That means if I say to you, walk in love, then walk in love. If I say walk in forgiveness, then you are to go and practice it. And you know, um, you, 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 when, when you are dealing with an issue like that, you know, somebody comes to you and says, oh, I love you with the love of the Lord, praise the Lord. Now, it's easy to hug a person like that. But what happens if a person pulls his face and it's walking the other way. What are you going to do then? You understand? You still got to love that person. Be nice to that person. Why? Not because pastor said so. Because the word of God says so. See, see what has happened to us. I'll tell you what has happened to us. By and large. People have preached and taught the word of God and shared their experiences with other Christians. And their experiences now have become your way of living. Amen. So you have brought the word of God down to that level. Amen. That means if brother so and so was sick and he died, then well, you know, God does these things. The, God, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Who can understand the will of the Lord? You are bringing the word of God down to your level of thinking. 
It's a humanistic way of thinking. A healing is another issue like that. Because when you're dealing with, he with healing, it's not that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. That was Job speaking. Out of ignorance of the word of God. And we quote that so nicely. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Well, you know, I just got fired from work and I'm sitting at home and I can't get another job. Uh, only the Lord knows what's He doing. No, brothers and sisters. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. God has healed us. God has blessed us. Amen. All right, some of you are struggling. That's your testimony in life. I've heard you many years back. You are still saying the same thing today. I'm struggling. It's almost as if in your piousness, you have decided, this is my way. This is my way of struggling. My mom struggled, my dad struggled, my family struggled. I had a rotten husband. And, and he put me in this mess. Or I had a rotten wife and he put me in this mess. And now my life is a life of struggle. No, sir. No. Sir. no, sir. no. 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 You might have had some upheavals. You might have had some challenges in life. But your life was not one of struggling. Say, so I refuse to struggle. Well, you say, I'm struggling. Yes. I know why you're struggling. Because you have elevated man's wisdom and the word of man above the word of God Amen. you quote it you speak it you even pray and it's a prayer sounds so nice people respond and say wow he can pray wow she can pray but you know deep down in your heart when you are in the secret place all by yourself your prayers are not even being answered you know it why? You are snared, Proverbs 6. You are snared by the words of your mouth. Proverbs 6 verse 2. You are ensnared by the words of your mouth. Your mouth has ensnared you. You go home. You speak about struggle. You go to work. You speak about how you're battling. You go to the cell meeting. You speak in the cell meeting how you're struggling. No, sir. Your life is not a struggle. Yes. The struggle is over. Yes. <laughs> yes. Your struggle is over. Yes. Why? Jesus did all of that for you. Yes. Let me tell you the difference between walking in the Word and mentally assenting to the Word. When you mentally assent to the word, it means that you quote scripture. <laughs> because you have been sitting in church so long. Before the preacher says Matthew 6, you says, yes, I know the scripture. And you quote it. But it has not broken in your heart. It is not revelation. There's a difference now. So you quote the Logos of God. I mean, 14 scriptures. 15, 18, 20. It's all out the head. But it has not opened up in your heart. Because if it had opened up in your heart, you will be making giant strides in the Spirit. Because then, I, see, 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 listen, listen. A person's located by his words. You would locate a person's faith by his words. That means the words that you speak locate you in the realm of the spirit. You understand? So if you're a very negative person, always speaking about struggles, I've located you. I've located you. But if you're a man and woman of faith bubbling with the glory of God, I say to you, how are you? You say, Pastor, I've got some challenges, but greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. 
I say, I say but, 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 but brother, what are you going to do about all of the challenges you have? He said, Pastor, I've got too much of the word inside of me. <laughs> Although opposition faces me, but I'm going to overcome it by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony. You understand? I say, but brother, I, I, I need to pray for you. You say, no, Pastor, hang on a minute. You put too much of the word inside of me. Hallelujah. So I say, you sure you don't want me to pray for No, Pastor. The word is inside of me. It's tabernacled on the inside of me. When I get up in the morning and pray in tongues, my neighbors get the message that this is a woman of faith. Hallelujah. What testimony, what testimony it is if you are a Christian man or a Christian woman, you're dragging your feet. All your neighbors are heathen. They are eating more than you. Their fridge is full. What testimony is it? They're driving a better car. You are still taking public transport. What testimony? So you say, but pastor, uh, you, you, you don't understand. I do understand. I've been putting the word of God in your mouth. I said, speak and keep on speaking. Your future is bright. Get up in the morning and speak that word. Go to the cell meeting, speak that word. Do you think we come to preach the word because we want to entertain you? No, sir. We want to take you higher. You understand? We, we want to make you people of prophecy. We want you to change your environment, change your life. We want you to change things. You have the power to do that. You understand? You're not barely getting along. All right, sit down a minute. Listen, listen, listen. Change your address. Yes. Change your address. What do you mean, Pastor, change my address? See, some of you are looking at me now. You're giving me this look. You, 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 may, you, may, you might even have a dialogue with somebody next to you. Th you think I'm crazy? Do you, do you think I'm crazy? No. This thing works. It works. Do you think I'm preaching this here because I just want to keep you busy, keep myself busy? And no, no. I've wor I, I work this thing. <laughs> it works. The word is empowered to prosper. It cannot fail. It just cannot fail. I'm in Hebrews 4, 12. The word. Boy, that's a revelation to me. I don't know how you quote that scripture, but to me, the word of God's quick. I pray here, something's happening on the other side. It's not just the word of man. It's not the word of a preacher. It's the word of God. Spoken out of a man and woman of faith. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> now I said change your address. Tell your neighbor change your address. What do I mean? Some of you are thinking, well, I live in uh, Timbuktu. Must I move to some other place? No, I'm not speaking about a physical address. Change your address in the realm of the spirit. If you have been, listen to me, if you have been living in a dead end street all your life, it's about time you change location. Amen. Amen. And it's about time you humble yourself and say, you know what? It's not working in my life. And so I got to listen to that preacher. See, but you don't have a teachable spirit, some of you. Not all of you, some of you don't have a teachable spirit because you think you know so much because you've been in the church for a long time now. So you know all the scriptures. You have your own opinions, you know. And so you say, well, I, I, I don't need teaching along these lines. I've heard that message before. What pastor's preaching now, we've done that, got the t-shirt. I've been there before. My question to you, then why isn't it working in your life? Oh, because pastor, it's my lot in life. Your lot in life...
Your Lord, listen, th- th- there's no such thing as struggling. I refuse to struggle. No, I refuse to struggle. Struggle me? No. I might have challenges, but I won't struggle. Then some of you are fighting battles. All right, let, let, let's talk about that for a minute. I don't know how I'm getting here, but anyway. You're fighting battles. How many of you are fighting battles? Great battles. Let me see your hand. You're fighting great battles. Let me see. All right. Thank you. Let me help you out. You should not be fighting battles. You got that? You should not be fighting battles. How many of you are fighting the devil? Now you're not sure whether you must answer or not. How many of you are fighting the devil? How, how, how many of you are fighting the devil? Now you're not sure, right? Now, not, not, you're not sure. You think this is a trick question. How many of you are fighting the devil? We got no business fighting the devil. <laughs> That's good, right? Jesus 14. Jesus won the victory for us. And let's give it into our hands. So you say, Pastor, what are we busy doing? We're just enforcing our victory. See, if you speak to the devil and address him as a giant, he'll be a giant to you. Oh, the devil's after me. Listen, God loves you. The Bible says we are co-laborers with God. That means He loves you. So you say to me, where's my problem then, Pastor? You want to ask me that, right? Ask me. Go ahead, ask me. Where's your problem? Where's our problem, Pastor? Ask me. See, some of you are still, your mouth is quiet. I can see you. I said, ask me. Ask me, where's my problem then, Pastor? The problem is you. It is. You are fighting fights you're not supposed to fight. You are fighting a battle that's already been won. You are taking lots in life that you should not be taking. Does that make sense? I mean, the Bible says, resist the devil. Now watch, watch, resist him. How do you resist the devil? With what? With the word of God, right? Uh Uh-huh. So the Bible says, resist the devil. Then he says something very profound. It's found in the book of James. It says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, that means... If I understand it, like the way I understand it, it means resist the devil and he'll flee from you. It means he, 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 he'll run, 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 run from you. Now let me tell you, let me tell you what the word flee means. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist the devil and he'll run in haste from you. So why are you running? When the Bible says you resist him, he'll run from you. And I like this. He does not just say he runs. He says he runs in haste. (laughs) You get the picture. I love that. That means in the realm of the spirit, as you speak to these things, as you release anointed words out of your mouth, that's what... Oh, but you don't understand, Pastor, the struggles I have in life. Who did I say the problem is? 
Say me. Me. Say me, Pastor. Me, Pastor. Nobody else. Revelation chapter 1 tells us. I said all of that to get to where I'm going to now. Revelation chapter 1 verse number 16 says this. It says, or 6 rather, Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. And he hath made us kings and priests unto all right let me give you a minute you're finding it you finding it okay now you remember when I started off I touched on so many things I touched on the issue of tide and I touched on the issue of love I touched on the issue of forgiveness just to illustrate the point that you should be a doer of God's word rather than a hearer only deceiving yourselves that means whatever you hear, you practice. You got that? So I've got to practice the word. Now, Revelation chapter 1, verse 6 says, He had made us what? He has made us what? Kings and priests. Isn't that a good scripture? Now, watch, we'll read the whole thing. It says, And He's made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So I'm a king and a priest unto my God. You like that scripture, right? You really like it. How much do you like it? Lots. Because every time, you know, you're praying, you say, I'm a king. Praise God, I'm a king. Praise God, I'm a priest unto my God. All right, you like it. I like it too. Say, Pastor likes it. I'll show you another scripture. Turn to the book of Ecclesiastics. You're ready for something now. Ecclesiastics chapter 10, verse number 16. You found it? You found the book of Ecclesiastics? You'll find it in the region of Proverbs and Psalms at the back there. You got it. All right. Let's read. One, two, three, go. No, no. All of you together. One, two, three, go. No, not everybody's reading it. Why? You're still trying to find it. Okay. Woe to thee, O land. Chapter 10, verse 16. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child. But Revelation 1, 6 says, God has made us kings and priests unto our God. Then Ecclesiastes 10 says, Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child. You got that? Am I losing you? Are you listening to what I'm saying? What does that mean? That means you can get kings in the kingdom that think and behave like children. They're not grown up in the things of... Oh yeah, you've grown up yeah. in stature. You've grown up in size. Amen. You've grown your hair. You've grown everything else. You have not grown in the things of God. You are still in the kindergarten class. <laughs> so you are saying, I'm a king. I'm a priest. You're behaving foolishly. How? How? I can locate you by your words. By what you're saying, by how you're behaving, by how you're acting. I know your spiritual maturity by all of that. So what does it mean? It means that you can be a child king. Now you know a child king, he's under governorship, he's under tutorship, he's under mentorship. In other words, he's still in training. But you know, 
the good thing from there is that you can train yourself. In other words, you can allow yourself to be trained to grow up in the things of God. That's why when we teach the Word of God and preach the Word of God like this, you ought to listen. You ought to open up your heart and receive. But you got two buddies, right? Two buddies on your right and two buddies on your left. So you have your own configuration about the Word of God. So when the Word of God is preached, I don't agree with that. I don't know what he's saying. Do you understand what he's saying? It doesn't apply to us. No, we are not there. So you've got your own configuration. But the question is, let's examine your life and see if it is working. Let's move your leaves and see what fruit is growing there. Strong words, right? But it must grow you. It must grow you. Say, I need to grow. Say, I need to grow. Say, hallelujah. Now, what's our subject matter tonight? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. My heart, listen to me, my heart is really to get the people of God in a place where they are function, functioning optimally in the things of God. You're a prophet of your own life. You must read this month's partnership letter that I've written. This month's partnership letter, is up, I said you must find a seed faith project and then you sow towards that. And then down the line, I said, you can grow your own miracle garden. Amen. Grow your own miracle garden. How? You want to grow your own miracle garden? Uh -huh. How many of you want to grow your own miracle garden? That's it. That's what you ought to be doing. You can grow your own miracle garden. How? By the word in your mouth. So if you want a life that's upward and forward, that's what you speak. If you want a manifestation of healing, that's what you confess. If you want financial harvest in your life, that's what you do. You speak it and you sow. You sow it and you speak it. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You can grow your own garden. Amen. You understanding what I'm saying? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, what has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now the Bible here is making reference to the unbelievers, in reference to salvation, in reference to our, our Lord Jesus Christ. They, they cannot acknowledge that He's Christ, the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Because Satan has blinded their minds. But in the same way, there are people that have come into the church accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan has also blinded their minds from receiving the glorious truths of the gospel. Healing. Wealth. Revelation. Power. Anointing. Preaching the word, extending and expanding the kingdom of God. They have not grasped it. They are waiting for better days. Your better day is now. Amen. Today is the best day you have. Are you waiting for tomorrow? No. No, you can change tomorrow. But your best day is now. What do I mean? The be Listen, you know why it's your best day? you in church. The word of God is being preached to you. Open up your heart. So that means if you are listening to the word of God, you're in the best place. Yes. Today is a wonderful day. Because after tonight, you cannot be the same. You, you understand what I'm saying? 
You can grab a hold of this word, jump in your car and say, wow, that's it. Amen. That's my portion. Yes. Victory is mine. Yes. My way is open. Yes. That's where I'm going. Yes. Upward and forward. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I refuse to be blinded. Yes. I remove the scales. Yes. In the name of Jesus. As pastors preaching, you should put your hands on your eyes and say, Lord, these are my optical eyes. But Lord, open up my eyes. And then, take it a step further, open up the eyes of my spirit and my understanding that I may understand the words of God and walk in that revelation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why are some of you having bad dreams? If you're having bad dreams, you're meditating on the wrong things. Listen to what I'm saying. If you're having bad dreams, you're meditating on the wrong things. You heard what Pastor Chris said. He says, if you have a dream, you're riding a bicycle. What did he say? He says, leave the bicycle. Jump into the car. <laughs> Hall- what, what was he saying? You can create your own future. Now today, listen to me. Today is really your best day. You are so privileged to be in the presence of God. Why? Why? After tonight, your eyes of your understanding will be open. After tonight, you're going to go away home saying, Lord, what pastor said, I want it in my life. All right, sit down a minute. Let's talk about this. I I have not even got to my teaching yet. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's take the issue of healing. We've touched on many issues tonight. Just to illustrate my point. Let's take the issue of healing. A man comes up, we pray for him. I say to the man, you are healed in the name of the Lord. Tears come down his eyes. Then his face beams. Oh, God touched me. I can see God touched him. Then his first thought is, I need to get to the doctor. Why? So the doctor must say he's healed. Now when he gets to the doctor, the doctor says, wow, uh, you're healed. He's excited. I'll run back to pastor. That's a testament. And what happens if the doctor said you are not healed? You have made the word of God of non-effect. Think about what I'm saying. In the Old Testament, the people didn't go to the physician to be pronounced clean. Who did they go to? So if the priest said you are clean, brothers and sisters, don't walk out of here and say, I've got to go and see the doctor. I'm not against doctors, please. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not against that. Please. Don't take it out of context. But if the anointing of God's on a man of God and he declares you are healed. Amen. You ought to go away from the house of God saying, wow, the priest announced my healing. I am healed. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. If the physician has to pronounce um, you know, either you set free or you healed or you're not healed, then who would you go to to be blessed? To the fortune teller? Are you getting my point? Am I illustrating it? In other words, if the f- word of the physician is end all, be all, who are you going to go for blessings now? Because you're not taking the pastor at his word. You know, Pastor Wesley Augustus had cancer. You, you people know that. Some of you know. He was diagnosed with having cancer. So I heard about it. The message I sent back was, you just trust God. You come tonight to the meeting. I'll pray for you. You'll be healed. So he came in the, in the service. It was a Tuesday night. I prayed for him. 
He fell under the power of God. But I liked what he said. He said, Pastor, I don't care what the doctors say. My man of God said, I'm healed, I'm healed. And he was healed. Now the doctor said, think, think about this. The doctor said, well, you're going to die in a week. What are you going to do then? Talk to me. I'm, I'm, causing, I'm making you to think. I'm stimulating your thinking. What would you do if the doctor said you've got one week to live? What would you do? You'd go home, order your coffin. Work out all the songs you're going to sing. Then you're going to cry all week thinking, who's going to be at my funeral? Will so-and-so come? We'll ask your husband, honey, what do you think? So-and-so will come? No, you had a fight with them last year at Christmas. Then, what about so-and-so? No, you gave them the wrong pudding. They won't come. So you're meditating on all of that. Would you do that? No. What would you do? There's no money in the bank. You go to the ATM, you push in your card, it spits it out and says you have a nil balance. So now the thought comes to you, you're going to starve and die because you have no money to buy food. What are you going to do? What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he that comes to God must be believed that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The zeros on your till slip at the bank is going to determine your future. When you have this, The message tonight was really 10 steps how to maintain, how to re regain and maintain your victory in life. Wow. That, that was my message. But here's, my, here's, my, here's my, 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 my challenge to you tonight. Is this word real to you? How much? Because if it's so real to you, you'll practice it. Amen. If it's so real to you, you'll obey it. Amen. If it's so real to you, you'll walk in it. See, I'm just showing you how much of faith you have on the wrong things. What the doctors said. Do doctors make mistakes? I've had, <laughs> we've dealt with issues where doctors pronounce people dead only for them to be real to the mortuary and they got up in the mortuary. So they mistakenly pronounced the man dead while he was alive. I've heard stories how people were wheeled in into theater and a man's kidney was removed when he went in for a tonsillitis thing. We've had, we've heard, I've heard of stories, true stories, people I know. A woman would go into Tirtha just to have, uh, what, what is the operation, you, you know, where you close up your womb? Hysterectomy? That means you, you don't have babies anymore. Just a simple procedure that they can handle. Then they make a slit or an incision in the person's uh, stomach or in the, in the um, intestine. And that person's dead. Healthy, well person. Person's dead within a week. But we put our faith on those people. But the word of God, mm-mm, mm-mm, no. 
This thing is powerful. Amen. <laughs> Woo. You can make your way prosperous with the word. Oh, I've been praying for. I'm going to run to the doctor. See what the doctor said. Huh? You could lose your healing right in the doctor's room. Right there. He says to you, well, you'll never walk again. Huh? We've had people that were healed. Brother Johannes, that lady in Amlazi. She was healed. The doctor said to her, she will be confined to a wheelchair and won't walk again. They put how many screws in her back? Seven screws, metal screws on her back. The doctor said, soon you won't walk. The lady came, got healed. They had to have an operation to take out the metal screws. And she was well and healed. God's word is above the word of a doctor. And above the word of a physician. I feel the anointing. Boy, oh boy. The doctor said, you cannot have a baby. He created you? Think about it. I, I'm just showing you how we are. I'm just showing you how we are. Do, 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 doctor said you can't have a baby. Did he create you? No. Did he give birth to you? No. Did he make, did he fashion your womb? No. Where are those people that will believe God? Where are those people that will say, God, I'll take you at your word? Amen. Where are those people that will say, it doesn't matter what happens. Yes. No calamity. Amen. No bad thing can happen to yes. me. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I'm going forward. Where are those people? That's why Jesus asked a profound statement. He says, when the Son of Man shall return, shall he find faith? Mm. But you are people of faith. Amen. You understand? You will take God at His word. You will believe Him no matter what. You know, you go for an interview and they say you cannot... Listen, here, here, here's, here's the thing you ought to get. The devil's your opposition. The Bible says we're not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So that's our opposition. He's trying to put roadblocks in your spiritual walk. So for example, they say, okay, uh, you know, uh, you, you can't walk again. Or you cannot have a baby. Or you, you're blind now. You cannot see again. Those, that, that is roadblocks to you. But in the name of Jesus, I will have a baby. In the name of Jesus, I will see again. In the name of Jesus, they said no to a job. A better one's coming my way. You're sitting down in the waiting room for your interview. They say, are you nervous? They say, me? Ah, do you know who I am? Arresting in God. Hebrews, Hebrews, chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, I think. Just turn there quickly with me. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. Someone got an amplified Bible. Would you read it to me? You got an amplified. Would you read it to me? Hebrews chapter 4. Say, I'm getting something tonight. For he who has once entered God's rest also has ceased from the weariness and pain of human labors, just as God rested from those labors. Did you get what, what it said? For he that has entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works had, as God did from his. 
In other words, this is what it means. For he that has entered into his rest has also ceased from his own struggles. Where is your struggle now? No struggle. You've entered into the rest of God. Hallelujah. That means you can do anything. You can accomplish anything. You can have a great life. Why? God is with you. He's laboring with you. Hallelujah. I have my own miracle garden. I plant seeds of faith. Wholesome words. Doesn't matter what the struggles are. I get up in the morning and I start planting seeds. Father, I'm the blessed of the Lord. I'm highly favored of the Lord. Lord, my church is blessed. The people in my church are blessed. My pastors are functioning under the anointing of God's Holy Spirit. Whatever their hands will touch will prosper in the name of Jesus. The businessmen in our church, the businesswomen in our church, they are functioning, Lord. Hallelujah. Doors are opening for them. The favor of the Lord is upon them. They cannot struggle, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, today, I refuse to lack. I cannot be in poverty. Money cometh to me. The favor of the Lord cometh to me. People shall give unto my bosom, pressed down, shaken together, running over. I refuse to struggle. Devil, I want you to hear that word. I'm a blessed man. I'm walking with the favor of the Lord. I'm an anointed man. The anointing of the Lord is on me. In the name of Jesus. When I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that today I'm going to have a great day. Opposition may face me. Opposition may come against me. You, you, understand, you understand what I'm doing? I'm not preaching to you. I'm growing my miracle garden. I'm showing you how. Don't pick up the phone. Um, Sister Lulu. Yes, who's this? It's sister so-and-so. What's wrong, sister? No food in the house. <laughs> All right, no food in the house. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. The cupboards look bare and dry. But that's not my portion. Lord, I thank you. You will speak to someone now that will bring me food in the name of Jesus. Well, what would I like? That's what God asked me. What would I like? I'd like some lamb, Lord. So I prophesy lamb in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, do you want curry or lamb roast? I'll have curry, Lord. Lamb curry and rice in the name of Jesus. So I prophesy that. Lord, my table is full. I cannot lack. Children, gather around the table. We're going to thank God for food. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, I smell the fruit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My cupboards cannot be empty. I prophesy to you cupboards, and I command you in the name of Jesus, be full. I can grow my own miracle God. You have what you have because you have not been speaking. Speak and keep on speaking. So you say, but pastor, I've tried it once and it hasn't worked. <laughs> you tried it once? That means you have to fight that in the realm of the spirit. When nothing seemingly seems to happen, you'll have to make that transition. Yes. Hallelujah. You know when a plane takes off, there's so much a thrust on those engines, but when it finally takes off, it starts to lift then it starts to fly and it seems like on the ground it's putting the most energy to try to take off it's almost like you say okay you but once it's up there it's flying listen the word of God works it can never fail tell your neighbor tell your neighbor it cannot fail It just cannot fail. Right. It cannot fail. <laughs> Woo! I 
I say, Lord, the church is blessed. Lord, the musicians are blessed. Lord, the singers are blessed. The pastors are blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have 10,000. Hallelujah. I receive them now. My sons, my daughters in the spirit. They're coming from everywhere. From the north, from the east, from the west, from the south. They're coming by the hundreds. In the name of Jesus. Lord, people are saying this is a bad month. It's a bad month for them. That's not the confession of my mouth. My month is blessed. Contracts are coming. Targets are being made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can grow my own miracle garden. Tell your neighbor that. I can grow my own miracle garden. But you remember that. Remember that scripture that I said. God had made us in Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. He's made us kings and priests. Then Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Woe to the land whose king is a child. A child is someone that's ruled by senses. Pastor, this cupboards are empty. There's no money in my pocket. Things are bad. Demons are troubling me. When I go home, the demons are talking. When I get up in the morning, the demons... Well, tell him to shut up. Oh Lord, you know, my father was cursed. My mother was cursed. Now it seems now, after I'm born again, there's a curse on me. You are the blessed of the Lord. You're not cursed. Say, I'm not cursed. I'm the blessed of the Lord. I'm well. I'm healed. I pray for some people sometimes. You know, one of the most difficult challenges when you're praying for the sick is to get them to receive. See, there's nothing wrong with the giver. God's a giver. Amen. And he uses his man, you know, woman, whatever the case is. So the problem's not there in giving, in dispensing. The problem is in receiving. Amen. Receiving. So I say, is the pain gone? No, pastor. It jumped from the left to the right now. <laughs> How do you feel now? Oh, it's still, oh, it's still there. Where's the faith? Where's the faith? You're going by your feelings? I don't feel healed. Don't go by your feelings. That's where the devil delves in the realm of the senses. You go by the word of God. Because you are a people of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you catch something tonight? I cannot lack. <laughs> I just refuse to. I cannot be sick. Mm -mm. If you are sick tonight, you should say, I'm healed. Right now, I'm healed. Are you healed? Yes. Are you well? Yes. Can sickness get onto you? No. You are sickness and disease free. Someone said it like this. I think it was Alexander Dowie. I'm trying to quote the thing right. He said, Sickness is a child of two people. Sin, who is the mother. And the devil, who is the father. Jesus set you free. You're free. You might be in a home cell that's small. You are saying, I see a great home cell. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Grow your own miracle garden. Hallelujah. There's power in your tongue. Say hallelujah. There's power in your tongue. You don't like your job? Change it. You don't like your bank balance? Change it. You don't like your car? Change it. You don't like your health? Change it. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for all those that, you know, you're looking to God and uh, you need either healing from God or a miracle from God. You come up. You come up. Come quickly. As these people take the seat, you come up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Koska predishi malakaja kaba sata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Leave us all right. I'll pr- listen. Leave her. Let us sit. I'll pray for her now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What is wrong with her? What is wrong with her? A back problem. Are you uh, sorry? Okay. Are you related to her? Oh, and you just brought her for prayer? I'll pray for her now in a minute. How old are you, Ma? 82. 82 years old. And you... You're 82? In June, you're 82. Well, look at her faith. In 80, at 82 years old, she still want to be made well. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll pray for you now in a minute. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up all your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, before you open your eyes, look at me. After what pastor preached tonight, you know that you're the blessed of the Lord. Amen. You know God is with you. You know that He loves you. It's not a struggle for Him to give you what you want. He's more willing for you to have what you want than you are willing to take it. The only issue is that you need to receive it. After you receive it, you rest. You understand? All right. The big question tonight will, are you able to receive it? I'll give it to you. Uh, When I pray for you, the anointing of God will come upon you. Are you able to receive it? Take all of you, take a deep breath. Are you able to receive it? Are you able to receive it? You're able to receive it. Hallelujah. You're able to receive it. Huh? You're able to receive it. All right. Okay, you ready? Take it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have you got it? I said, have you got it? That's it. It's yours. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you asked him for is yours. Say, I have it. Say, I have it. Come on, guys. Say, I have it. Say, it's mine. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now rest in it. All you have to do is go from here and say, Pastor prayed for me. It's mine. Do you have it, Ma? Do you have it? Some of you, do you have it? Do you have it? You know what you ask God for. Do you have it? It's yours. It's yours. Do you have it, sister? Do you have it? Say yes. Hallelujah. 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 Help them up to their feet. I want to ask them a question. I want to ask them if they have it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. You can't get up, leave her. You can't get up, leave her. Leave her. All right. Now, if I had to give you something, you wanted this, right? For me. Say you wanted this, and I gave it to you. This is something that you really, really desired. It's a gift. You wanted it. And I said, there, take it. And you took it. Now it's yours. What would you do? You will rejoice. 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 It's yours. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Smile and say it's mine. Now, now, what people, what people, what people don't know, in the realm of the spirit, everything exists. Now, when you grab a hold of it, see, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things. That means whatever you see, you grab a hold of it by faith in the unseen realm and you bring it into reality. You will soon see the manifestation with your optical eye. Now, what Christians wait for is when they see it, then they say, wow, I'm so happy. Be happy now. 
Come on, thank God for it. That's how you receive. I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for someone with a burst of excitement, like I. Oh, God. You understand? Hallelujah. Have you got it? It's yours. Say, devil, you can't touch it now. Say, it's mine. Say, no matter who says what. If the doctor says something, hang on. If the doctor says something negative, it's still yours. You with me? If someone in the natural says something negative, it's still yours. It's mine. Hallelujah. So I grab a hold of it. By faith. In the name of Jesus. It's mine. Say it's mine. Say it's mine. Say it's mine. Say I got a hold of it. Now you don't know this, but everything we pray for in the church, that's how we get a hold of it. When we were negotiating this building, they were saying to us, no. <laughs> they phoned me in uh, Swaziland. I uh, was Pastor Wesley or Pastor Mark, I can't remember. And they said to me, Pastor Nathan was with me. They said to me, no, this building, they said no. My words were in the car. I was sitting in the car. What was my words? I said it's mine I said now when they said no now I know it's mine now many times what the devil does he says no because you feel rotten you feel so he says no then you know you go to the doctor he says no then you think it's no no that's a wrong way you go there now and you say it's mine the doctor says it can't be done. You say, hey, doctor, <laughs> you don't know who you're speaking to. I serve a God of miracles. He's a miracle worker. Say, so it's mine. I think the trouble with Christians is they give up too easily. That's why the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. You caught it tonight. <laughs> I said you caught it tonight. You have it tonight. You have it tonight. You have it tonight. You got reason to now. When you go home, you just smile all the way back home. Say, Lord, is... I don't know. You know, some of you maybe were trusting God for a job, a new job, a promotion, whatever it was. A miracle in your body, whatever it was. You got it tonight. I said, you got it tonight. Now you should go home, place your, you know, place your hands there. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm pregnant. Glory to God. You understand? The rest of you should go home and say, Wow, that job is mine. That promotion is mine. Oh, if I can tell you stories. One time I was in a meeting and I wanted a promotion to work. And things were looking impossible. And they told me, no, that, that, that particular position you'd never get because there's a blue-eyed boy there of somebody, you know. So that night, the pastor was preaching. I was in the meeting. I was seated right in the front because I was one of the leaders. Then the pastor was saying, you know, if you, if you need something at work, he says, visualize it. Just imagine it. So what I did was, I saw the chair and the office that that man was occupying. Amen. I'm telling you what I've done. So I was there like you. So in my mind's eye, in my spirit, I saw the chair, I saw the office, I said, Lord, it's mine. Yes. That night I grabbed a hold of it. The next day when I went to work, nothing changed. Two months went, nothing changed. Five months went, nothing changed. On the sixth month, the job was mine. So I was not walking around saying, I wonder if the job is mine. I, I wonder if I'm going to get it. No. In my heart, I said, Lord, thank you. I received it. It's mine. It's mine. The more they told me it's not mine, and there was no way I got it, the more I said, Lord, it's mine. Fight the good fight. Uh -huh. Because you're a good soldier of the Lord. And good soldiers fight a good fight. Uh -huh. You got it? Yeah. 
lay hold of eternal life. You grab the hold of it tonight. It's not a hit and miss thing. You know the things of God. It's not a hit and miss thing. Oh, I'll pray and see if God answers. No, God loves you. Amen. God is for you. Amen. If it's a business you want, He wants to give it to you. Amen. If it's a promotion you want, He wants to give it to you. Amen. A house you want, He'll give it to you. A baby you want, He gives it to you. Amen. It's promotion, He gives it to you. A car, He wants to give it to you. Are you able to receive it? Amen. That's all it is. Are you able to receive it? When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? Can he find faith? Is faith, love, and hope still abiding in your heart? Is it still abiding there in your heart? Oh, I got something. I cannot be embarrassed. You know why? You know why I can't be embarrassed about people watching you standing like this here? They can't do nothing for you. So I'm not ashamed of my God. When David danced before the Lord, you know, he danced unashamedly before the Lord. His wife despised him. He said, you're dancing like that, a king, you should be ashamed. David said, I'll dance even more vigorously. Because it is the Lord that had made me king. Are you ashamed of God? You can't be. Embarrassed? There's no such thing as embarrassed. If you want to get miracles, and obtain the blessings of God. You have to go beyond embarrassment. Yes. The woman of the issue of blood says, If I may just touch them. And while the people throng, she pressed. The Bible says she pressed. And suddenly when she touched Jesus, the Bible says virtue went out of him. And then Jesus asked the question, says, Who touched me? Amen. And then the disciples turned around and says, Lord, there's so many people. And you ask a stupid question like that. Who touched me? He says, yes, virtue went out of me. In other words, what he said was, someone made a demand on my ability. So did you make a demand tonight? Then you got it. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a great hand. Go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, keep on clapping. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, I got it. Thank you, Lord Jesus.